hi friends welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello my name is Pitsayo on this channel I share my life's experiences and journey as an international student living in the United States today I just thought to share with you some lessons that I have learned about money and life from my Nigerian dad so backstory I grew up in Nigeria, I lived my entire life in Nigeria and only moved to the United States in 2020 to begin my MBA program. My program is over now and I just took some time to reflect and this idea came up and I just thought to share with you some lessons that I've learned, hoping that you can learn one or two from this and seeing if there are any similarities between how I was raised and how you were raised and if there are any things or any thoughts that you have to chip in, you just let me know in the comment section. If this interests you, definitely please keep watching, okay? So like I said, this is like a story time video, so make sure you grab your tea, your snacks, and um, maybe a notepad for some calculations, because I'm going to be talking money. Let me tell you about my family. I, I come from a family of six, my dad, my mom, and my elder sister, and two younger siblings. We grew up in Lagos, Nigeria. I mean, I've lived my entire life in Lagos. My dad... Um, grew up in the village. He said at some point in his life he worked as a houseboy and then he got educated um, He moved to Lagos and got a decent job where he was working and making a living before getting married and you know raising our family Growing up, I've always seen my dad as highly financially prudent and um, from the way he talked from the things that he did for us from um, the, ex the kind of life experiences that he gave to us, trying to ensure that we went to the best schools, giving us a decent and comfortable lifestyle at home, and just in his many interactions with his friends, I could just see that he was someone who tried to give his best for his family, but it was personally living below his means. He was never trying to impress anyone, just quietly living below his means and ensuring that he's giving his best to his family. Now the first part of this video is the money, money lessons that I learned from my dad. So before I went to the university, which is college for people who are not um, Nigerian, I was never really inclined to finances or lessons about money. Um, I went to Coronet University in Nigeria and we don't use phones in CU. Oh, we didn't use phones in CU. So I remember the first bank account I created in school then, my dad put his phone number as the contact number on the account so that anytime I withdraw money, he will get the alert and see that I have withdrawn you know, this amount and he, he knows what's in my account, right? He, so that he anytime like I'm, I need money, he just like send me money like allowance, right? and that's how basically I, I was like 100 level 200 level and that's my dad's way of just like tracking our expenses um he did that for myself and my sister right that was just his own way of tracking and knowing how much you spend and you know what you're using his money to buy because he would get the alert and if it's something outrageous he'll ask you okay um what was this what did you buy what did you use the money to do and stuff like that and it was not really a bother i didn't really care i wasn't I was just okay i was an okay spender right and um in my 300 level which was my third year i got to do an internship quick disclaimer i'm going to be talking money um in this video and because i grew up in nigeria i'm going to be talking in naira terms so if you are not from nigeria just just try to picture it in your currency right but i'm talking in naira Right, so every amount that I mention is in Naira. If you watch this video up until this point, don't forget to hit like on this video. It really supports me to keep showing up with great content like this. Okay, so during that internship, I was being paid 59000 every month and I worked for six months. Now, don't forget that um, that account is the same account that my dad gets alerts in. I mean, I already told him that, oh, I mean, I got my offer letter and showed him and everybody was happy, hey, I'm going to be making money now and things like that. And during my internship, somehow, I mean, because this was the first time that I was being paid, I never really, this was the first time I was working and being paid. 
I never really planned my finances. I was just always, I was happy that I was making money. Um, I was not exactly exorbitant, but I, I know that I wasn't tracking my expenses and I could have done better. So I remember buying myself the latest boat six at the time. It was about 65,000 Naira or so. Um, I, I, I did like two bridal trains. I was on two bridal trains. I bought the clothes. I was feeling happy. I bought shoes. Um, during lunch at work, I would go to like fancy restaurants and spend my money. I never had a problem with data subscription because you know I had money. And then I would just spend and spend my money like that. And my dad never said anything to me. Like he was seeing all the alerts. He didn't say anything at all. And after my internship, because my internship, the, the internship was from March, I remember it was March 2012, it was March 2012 to August 2012, and after my internship was over, when it was time to resume school, late August or early September, I don't remember exactly when, um, as the tradition is, I write out my list like the things the list of things i'm going to buy provisions clothing everything i needed for school put like a budget do like a budget kind of thing put the amount right beside it and submit it to my dad right for approval and you send my mom the money and me and my mom will go to lagos market balogu market and buy all the things that i needed for school that was like tradition from 100 level and because i was going into my final year right i was like yeah i need to go and stomp the yard like a big girl i have worked i you know i'm going into final year i was just very super pumped and so i wrote down my list and i remember that everything i wrote it was hundred thousand at the time that was the highest amount that my budget had ever been right in terms of things to buy for it for resumption and i was just like i mean i'm a big girl so <laughs> let me submit it and I sent it to him and I remember that day we were on the dining table and he just said, oh, why are you giving me this budget? Don't you have the money? And I was like, I was confused. Like, I don't understand. Like, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean don't I have the money? And like in that moment, he was like, yes, like you worked for six months. You should be able to afford the things you need for your school resumption and my heart really did sink like I felt betrayed I felt stupid and betrayed for a moment because I thought to myself oh my god first of all you are right I have made money I do have this money in my account but second of all I did not know that I was supposed to do this for myself <laughs> Do you get it? Like, if I'd known from the start of my internship that as I'm going to school now, I'm going to start spending for myself, I would have been more prudent with how I was spending the money that I received, right? I didn't know that that was what was going to happen to me. And he was serious. That was it. And I, I felt really sad. I felt like, why would my dad do this to me? He really didn't give me any money. I remember that I used my money to buy the things that I needed for school and of course I didn't spend hundred thousand because I, I could not spend my money buying all the extravagant things that I had written on the budget I probably spent half of it buying things for school and my mom supported me with provisions so she bought provisions for me and then she also bought some fabrics for me because I just wanted to buy some new fabrics to give to a tailor to, to tailor some designs that I already sketched out and it was it was it was very surprising to me and i was quite sad i remember resuming um in 400 level um the first day that i got into school i mean what had gone out i think i was one of the highest paid interns and people had you know spoken that ah this person is collecting 59,000 because people were collecting like 25k 30k and somebody's collecting 59k so i remember girls were in my room that day when i came and uh, I mean, it's not like they had any bad intentions, but people want to just want to see like, oh, what did you bring? Like, oh, where are your new shoes? What are your new clothes? And when I was unpacking, I kind of knew the reasons why the reasons why they were there. And I'm sure they were quite disappointed because I didn't really buy things. Like, I just brought my previous clothes and just like one or two new things and arranged my wardrobe. And you know, from that time onward. I learned a subtle lesson there, even though my dad didn't sit me down and say, this is the lesson I'm teaching you, 
but from that experience i realized that it was important to save and to also invest i remember that i skipped something um after he didn't give me the money right he now also asked me to send him fifty thousand naira for me to buy shares and i was like wait i don't get it like i don't even get it <laughs> You should have been, imagine my confusion at that point in my life. This was 300 level. I was 18. I didn't understand. Like, I knew he, he used to invest. He used to talk about stock broking and dividends and all of that. But I was just like, I thought, <laughs> your parents are supposed to do this for you. <laughs> oh my God. A joke. A real joke. Anyways, I ended up sending him um, 50K to help me buy some shares. And he was so kind to actually even add some money to it. And he gave me the papers to sign. And that deal just closed there. Now, fast forward to going into school. Because I knew that I was now spending my own money, right, in school. So no normally when my account is almost empty because I've spent money in school, buying school things, like I would just need to put a call through and then he would just send money to me because of course he sees what's in my account balance but a 400 level i was spending for myself i was spending the money that i made so i was a lot more careful with it so for instance if i needed to spend 8k in two weeks right i'll go to the bank i will withdraw 8k there are no atms around school vicinity at that time we have to go to like outside the, the school gate to go and withdraw money from the bank and i will withdraw like 8k but I wouldn't use that entire 8k. I would withdraw 8k and probably spend like 7k and then keep the 1k in my safe in the closet I had in school. So that was like how I was just like saving money from the money that I had. And I was also doing that because I knew that, okay, if I was saving the money that I had in my bank account, he would know that, okay, this girl still has money, right? <laughs> so I used small sense then. And, um, Anyways, it was my money and I was saving it and also somehow that kind of gave me the idea to start doing business in school. So if you recall, I mentioned that my mom bought some fabrics for me and paid a tailor to actually sew them, right? So when those fabrics, when those sewn outfits came, I brought them to school and started selling them to my classmates and, you know, floor mates. And I was able to make some money from doing that as well, along with the savings that I um, I was saving from my money. And it was money that I made from, you know, the, the sale of those outfits in my final year, along with the money that I saved, right? I remember coming back home from school in final year and I had 40000 in cash. Right, so it was that cash that I took to the bank and I actually went and created my own bank account that like the phone number because I was using, I'd, I'd graduated from school and I could use my phone now. So I created a bank account, deposited the money in there and anytime I made outfits for people, I would send them that account and somehow that's how I started building for myself financially. So after graduation, like I said, when I created that account and I started, um, I went to a fashion school and I started learning how to sew and I started sewing for people, I started with like, you know, family and friends and people from Instagram, my sister's colleagues at work, you know, from doing that, I started, you know, making some money and in 2014, I was able to buy a sewing machine. I remember that the machine was 70K at the time and when I brought the machine home, my parents were like, they were surprised that ah, where did you see money? Because, you know, they had stopped sending me money since after I graduated from school. And they just thought the tailoring I was doing, it was just like, <laughs> unkosher tailor, you know? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. They didn't think that there was anything in it. They didn't think that it was something that would go. And I do not blame them at all because, and you should not blame your parents as well if they are not actively supportive of your um, creative interest. Or entrepreneurial venture the thing is they've not seen too many examples of people that are doing things like that and doing it well but when you show them proof so for instance when I was able to bring that machine home and I said oh I bought it by myself from the money that I made from actually sewing and selling it to people they were like okay there's something here do you get and somehow and I continued they saw my tenacity they saw 
they saw how dedicated that i was to actually sewing i would sit down like under the staircase and like i had like a manual machine and before i got the the industrial one and i'll be there hours sewing you know i'll be you know trying to do a lot of things to better my skills they will see people come to the house to come and fit clothing and they're like okay you know this is like this thing there's actually something there right you're not going to be yabola or <laughs> yarisi you know down the road and i think this would be beneficial for any young person who is watching me right now that you you know you want to go into entrepreneurship or you want to go into the creative industry and you're still seeking for acceptance or approval from your parents just keep doing the work keep doing the work and let your proof show let your results actually show for you your parents just want to be sure that you are not going to be poor they just want to be sure that the money that they spent you know on you to go to school is not going to be a waste they just want to be sure that you are going to live up to the standard that their mates or your mates are so just keep doing the work when they see proof they have no choice but to back you my parents were very supportive but they just didn't think that it was something that i wanted to do in the long term so just like that continue doing the work continue and let your results show for it since then i think that lesson really hit me hard and it's something that i'll never forget in my entire life right because i wasn't expecting it at all but has it not paid off yes it has the 50k investment that i made like in 2012 like it's yielding a lot well maybe not a lot because we all know how the economy is in nigeria but it's yielding something till now i'm getting dividends from that investment and it's not just that as time went on and i started doing business and i started working i started to invest more in the nigerian stock market just because of that sole experience and in terms of saving as well i became more frugal in quotes with my um, expenses i tried to budget and plan and track my expenses and that's kind of how i started building for myself financially right so after immediately after school i started doing this business that i did for a year before I got a full-time job in 2015 right and so kind of how that's kind of how like I started you know doing things for myself and using the lessons that I've learned on saving and investing to ensure that I was more prudent in my spending and I was actually tracking the things that I was using my money for okay, so let me digress a little bit and say something that happened to me this was in 2018 right when I I moved out of the house because if you've been following my journey you know that like, i used to live with my parents and then i moved out because we live very far away from where my office was located so i had to move out and i moved to the island victoria island in in lagos at that time and like everything about rent i sorted it out myself i didn't have a problem with that but i remember i was going to be living with you know a couple of people and one of the ladies in the house had just told me that oh she was waiting for her dad to send her the rent money when her dad sent her the rent um she would send it to me and i was like wow people collect rent money from their parents oh my god wow you know in that moment I caught myself in a little bit of comparison and I'll tell you something um, this is a honest moment right in that moment I felt like oh my god wow people are actually um, people's parents are still fending for them because I mean this person was like my mate or even older than me or something I don't know in that moment there was a slight tinge of ah and it's me that is doing my own by myself right and somebody else is getting support but you know what the next thing that I did I did like I actually caught myself doing that and I said no Sisaya, you would not people have different situations and you will not compare your upbringing to another right you should be grateful that you can afford the life that you want to live right without any kind of support or the other you should not compare and say your parents didn't do well for you and I caught myself in that moment and I actually said thank you Jesus that I can afford this thing that I'm doing right I can live my life how I want to live my life and do things for myself I refuse to compare my parents and wondering why they are not supportive of me or why they are not still giving me money at this point in my life and this is one thing that um, we should do as humans because many times we feel some type of way when some things happen to us when some people say some things to us or instead of us to address it in that moment we would let it 
just like slide we will not address it internally we just let it slide and then another thing will happen another thing will happen another thing will happen and one day you just flare up you just wonder why you are very aggressive to your parents you just wonder why um like it may not be your parents it might be anything you may just wonder why like you just flip it's because of those small things that those small seeds that have been germinating in your heart through the things that people have said or the things that you've heard or the things you have seen so this is just a charge to you right if you find a situation that you're not comfortable with speak to it in the moment and just like cancel this whatever it is i don't know like what the situation is but catch yourself right when you ever want to slip into comparison or slip into envy or slip into ingratitude catch yourself in that moment and just turn it around it's a lot better than suppressing your emotions and suppressing your feelings and you know just thinking that all is fine when somehow in your heart you know that your heart moved because of that thing that happened this aside the point i just wanted to say this so definitely top money lessons from my dad saving and investing i hope you're saving i hope you are um, actively investing in markets that you understand and i hope you are trying to seek more knowledge on things that you do not know in the financial market now coming to the second part of this video which is the life lessons that i've learned um, i identify three things um, first is independence now i'm not going to speak about independence from a place of um, not needing any help I for one as a woman if I need help I would ask right I would ask for help I, I don't I don't try to form oh I can do it by myself I can do it no I'm a soft lady <laughs> I can't do it okay I can do it but if I need some help I would ask my dad really taught us to be independent in the way we lived our lives and he showed this from the examples that um, from the daily examples of how he lived from the seemingly strenuous things to like the easiest things around the house like fixing the light bulb or just clearing something out my, like my dad is not going to wait for anybody to do it he will just like do things right and somehow growing up if you grow up with someone like that you see someone that's actually doing things you'd be inspired to just do things for yourself as well and i know like from the very strenuous things to the easy things like fixing light bulbs around the house to like changing the car battery i remember i can't remember the age my father taught me how to change a car battery so we had this generator that uses battery and then uh, maybe there was a spare car in the house that the battery um was bad so you change the generate you change the battery from the generator to the car and like because of the number of times i followed him when he was doing and he would call me and say oh come and look at what i'm doing because of the number of times that i i saw him do that i like could do them so many times myself even when i was driving my car in lagos like when i had an issue i could just if i buy a new battery i could just change it by myself because i had the spanner 10 11 and i could just like you know do things right if i didn't have anyone around me if i didn't have any guy around me or any mechanic around me to help out with that many of the things i just learned from him i, I learned them from him just living living out his own life right and um, which brings me to my second point on hard work my dad is very hard working you know somehow i I, I got this spirit of entrepreneurship from him even though he's not an entrepreneur he doesn't run a business or have a business that he's overseeing he works nine to five but on the weekends he's a teacher as well and since like since my secondary school or that i can remember since secondary school he has had that teaching job that he always did on the side like during the weekends and that in itself inspires me to place value on my time and to see how much more productive that I can be with the time that I have. I know people have different capabilities, right? But growing up with someone like that, that you can see who, despite the many things that he's doing, he's hard working on his own and he's there for his family, spending from his for his family. You'll just be inspired to like do the best for yourself and be the best that you can, really. And I know that there was a time that when we were um, in secondary school, when I was almost done with secondary school, that he got laid off from his job. And it was that teaching job on the side that really catered to our needs at that very point in time. 
that was a big lesson for me honestly and it has not left me many of the things that i have learned like i said it's just from the occurrences in his life and the things that i have seen him do without him actually like you know voicing it out to me that's why like as parents if you're a parent watching this it's important for you to live your life by example because your children are actually watching you it's not just about the things that you are saying it's basically about how you are actually living out your life so if you ever had it in mind to ask me about my work ethic or how i get to do the many things that i do just know that this fruit didn't fall far from the tree okay it has to do with how i was conditioned growing up now the third and final lesson i learned from my dad is the importance of care and character my dad is a man of character and you'd see how much he cares for people with the way he treats people and you know what he does for other people and that has greatly inspired me to actively seek out opportunities to help people to make the lives of people better with the things that i have so it's not even just me going out of my way it's me actually looking inwards and seeking to find what things are within me that i can bless the world with what things are within me that i can actually impact the world with what things do i have that will be benefit other people what experiences have i learned on my journey that will help other people do better on their as i grow up and i become older i just hope to do more for my parents and also you know to be stable enough to start building a solid foundation for my children even though they're not here yet so i'm not married or anything like that right but you know it's just something to look forward to i hope you enjoyed watching this video if you did definitely please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel if any of the points that i mentioned in this video resonates with you please drop it in the comments i would like to see it i would like to hear from you if you had a similar experience growing up with your parents let me know in the comments as well if there's any lesson that you learned from your parents that i didn't mention that you would like um our viewers or readers to hit to see or to know please drop it in the comments i'll be waiting to read thank you so much for watching my video again have a beautiful day bye